What is going on investors back again time for a swing trading portfolio update. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. This is an account that I started with $1,000 and I'm taking you through my journey kind of learning how to do a little bit of swing trading, maybe occasionally a little bit of day trading. We'll talk about that today, but today I'll give you an update on the portfolio and I'll talk about how do I find stocks that I trade personally inside the account. So first a portfolio update. I've got all my transaction here. Now, it doesn't include today's transaction, which I'll talk about here in a minute, but here's some key lessons that you learn. So I have my winning trades here and I have my losing trades here. And there's actually one more winning trade that I'll talk about here in a minute. So I've had a six winning trades and four losing trades. So you might think, well, you know, what's my performance? You know, I must not be doing that good with that kind of performance. But this stock portfolio, again, I started it with $1,000. And I currently have a $1,070.99. So up, essentially up about 7% since I started this. And it looks like my, my first trade was back in August. So really just two, maybe even three months of trades and already up 7%. But as you can see here that I've had a lot of quote unquote losing trades. And so that's lesson number one for you, especially with a small account. I think any size account but especially when you're starting a really small account like this and you're just kind of learning and you're just trying to get your feet under you, learning how to trade, learning how to put in the orders and execute them and looking what kind of patterns to look for, set your stop losses really tight. As we go through these losing trades, take a look. I bought Cisco for 42.30, but I sold out of it when, when it started going against me at 41.45. That's a very, very tight stop loss that I set there. Citibank, I bought in at 48. Eight, sold out at basically $47.91. Apple, I bought at $113.65. I sold out at $113.07. And this ticker symbol BHC, I bought at $17.39, sold at $16.65. But my winners luckily have outpaced any of my losing trades. I bought Intel at $48.77, sold it basically at $52. Bought Rocket Mortgage at $27.68, sold at $31.96. That was a really good trade there. Bought Apple at 111.75, sold at 113. Bought GE at 642, sold for 650. This was a really tight close call here because they actually this stock dropped like 13 or 14 percent in this day because they came out with a Wells notice. Luckily, I had my stop loss set and I got out for a profit. Then finally, I bought Apple again here at 115.05 and sold at 115.85. Probably could have held on to these shares a little bit longer. Apple's trading closer to one. 20 right now. So now some interesting stuff's going on here in the next couple weeks. You might be wondering, how am I picking my stocks? I'll get to that here in a second, but we have some upcoming earnings announcements. I typically would not, and I repeat, not hold stocks in a trading portfolio over earnings. Now it could work out great. The earnings could go well, or it could work out really bad. There was a stock called Fastly that dropped like 30% yesterday, not on any kind of an earnings announcement, but kind of a shareholder meeting. So these are kind of some things that you want to keep in mind, but we got Tesla next week on the 21st, uh, AT&T and Intel on the 22nd, American Airlines also on the 22nd, Amazon on the 26th, Microsoft on the 27th, Apple on the 29th, Facebook on the 29th. This is just a small snapshot of the companies that are going to be recording, reporting over the next few weeks, and these do create buying opportunities. Now, I will talk about my trade today. I bring up my videos because yesterday I posted a video on Bank of America, and I noted on the video that Bank of America was pulling into a range that I actually thought was kind of interesting. I'm on a 30-minute chart here. I'll pull it out. Out to a daily view here and notice that I have this line right here marked on here. This came from yesterday's video. I marked this line in place saying, hey, if Bank of America pulls back close to this line, I think I'm looking to go long. That was at 2307, right at that $23 mark. But I noted on the video that this line is, is really kind of set kind of low. You could definitely push this up into the 23 and a quarter. And today I decided to step in in here, as you can see, I have quite a few orders here with uh, Bank of America. I decided to step in on Bank of America today 
because this stock bottomed out here at 23.50, right at 23.50-ish. And I, that took a signal to me like maybe it's time to get here and buy. Notice that it was right at this time. I was watching this stock today. I had my kids today and I was watching them, watching them play. I was sitting out in the backyard with them. Their mom is working today. So I was out in the backyard with them watching them play. And I was watching this MACD come over, making sure they weren't beating each other up. But I noticed this MACD starting to cross here and notice our RSI started to go into positive territory. Notice when I opened up my very first trade here with Bank of America was right here. Now, unfortunately, I was way too quick on the gun with this one because this one created a nice little uptrend. I ended up putting this uh, uptrend here in later in the day. I could have rode this stock from when I first bought it right around 2360 and I could have rode it all the way up to where it closed today, close to $24. Unfortunately, I kept uh, setting stop losses. They got hit and then I bought back in and then I put another stop loss. Now I ended up making a little bit of money on this, maybe a dollar or two, but I could have made uh, closer to five, six, seven dollars on my trade, maybe even a little larger than that if I put a larger position. But this just goes to show you I'm on a new account. This is without margin. I'm sure I'll have people in the in the video saying I should be trading options or doing going short and doing this. This is a thousand dollar account, no margin. I have no intention to bring in any margin. I don't have any intention to deposit any more money. It would defeat the purpose. I am showing you this from a beginner's perspective, somebody that doesn't want margin, somebody that only has a thousand dollars. I'm showing you, you can profitably trade a, an account of that size. You just need to be careful. You need to set those stop losses. You need to learn when to pick trades. So again, we're up 7%. Now, my point here with Bank of America is I figured out a good entry in this stock because I'm analyzing it from a fundamental perspective as well. They reported earnings. I took a look at the earnings. I took a look at the chart. That is step one, in my opinion, if you want to find good stocks to buy and, and sell follow these companies from a fundamental perspective. It all goes along with all these trades, Intel, Rocket Mortgage, Apple, GE, Apple again. Notice how many times I've traded Apple. One, two, three different times I've actually traded Apple over the last few months. It's because a stock I closely follow. I follow the price action. I know what's going on with the company. I know when they report earnings. I know when their special events are. And so I think that is critical if you want to trade stocks. Now I know there's lots of traders out there that only know the ticker and that's fine. If you just want to go off the charts, that is fine. I am showing you a little bit of a hybrid approach where I know a little bit of the fundamentals. I know when these companies are reporting earnings. I know when there's key events and things like that happening with the company. I also know when companies kind of oversell or kind of overreact to the news. And I kind of felt that with Bank of America. I also saw that with Apple as well. Now, there is a backup plan just in case you don't want to uh, follow companies that closely. I am not associated with this website at all. I think I found out about this website on the Trader Merlin show, which you probably should check out as well while you're here on YouTube. I was a guest on his program just a few weeks ago as well. So you might want to check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But he turned me on to this site called Stock Fetcher. Now you can pay for this. I'm not saying you need to, but take a look at this. These are stocks where the moving average of 13 days crossed the moving average of 15 days. So we have Apple. So that's a bullish cross. We have GE. Oh, you know, notice these are stocks that we've traded. Microsoft has crossed EFA. I'm not sure what that is. And we have VWO. And you can look at 418 results if you want to pay. I don't necessarily think you need to. Now, another formation that I actually like is this cup and handle formation. So you can come here to examples and they've got all these indicators right here. And so you can click on them. And they'll show you four or five stocks that are exhibiting that chart formation. Now, this is all probably a computer done. And so you need to verify this on your own. But we have American Airlines right here. And that does look like a cup and handle formation there. We have HYG here. Again, another cup. Look like it might have broken out a little bit, but it's pulled back. That could pop back up. We've got Vale, which is, I think, a minor. This stock isn't didn't quite get all the way back up here with these cup and handle formations. Formations. I like to see it come all the way back up here, kind of like this did and almost like American Airlines did. Then we have 
RCL. This is Royal Caribbean. This had a cup, but then it gapped down. And so that's a little worrisome, but that could uh, bottom out here and then rebound. And then finally, we have a four. This is Discovery Incorporated. So that is also exhibiting somewhat of a cup and handle. But there's all the, I mean, you can do MACD bullish crossover. You can just click on these and then they generate stocks here. Well, it's a good idea generator. So that's where I would find some trades, but I also think just fundamentally following stocks coming in here, creating a big kind of watch list of stocks on trade station. They show you when they're going to report earnings. Those are key days. I would not want to hold stocks through earnings, but after earnings, like we saw with Bank of America here, we actually had this big gap down with Bank of America. I like that kind of move, you know, gap down into an area of support here. This is a good time to buy the, the company. And as we see, it bounced back nicely today. So be on the lookout. We're in earnings season right now. Just be on the lookout for these types of bounces as these companies start reporting. We should have lots of that in the coming weeks to days. Now, I just want to make it clear. A swing trading portfolio should just be one portion of your entire investment ideas. Now, the only reason why I have only $1,000 in this account, I certainly can afford to put more. I could probably put up to $10,000 in account to kind of play around with. But guys, take a look. This is my IRA account. You're only allowed to put $6,000 per year into an IRA account. And take a look, I'm up 71% over the last two years. The NASDAQ's up 53%. The S&P 500 is up 25%. And the Dow Jones is up 12%. I am beating every single average by actually quite a large margin. You see here my cumulative uh, gain here. Guys, buy and hold works. Buy and hold works. And so my primarily focus is my buy and hold portfolio. As you can see here, the strategies that I'm using are is working incredibly well, and I anticipate it to continue on in the future. But adding in some trading, adding in some more skills is something that I like to do, and I hopefully will take it on for you. So key takeaway today, guys, set your stop losses really tight. Every single one of my trades has been closed out by a stop loss, okay? I am... Entering the buy signal, I buy the shares and I enter a stop loss immediately. That is the most important thing for you to do when you are buying these stocks. Buy in at a price and put a stop loss underneath it. And then what happens is if the shares go in my favor, they start going up. What do I do? I start bumping up, bumping up, bumping up my stop loss. And eventually the stock will pull back and I end up selling the shares. Now, you're not going to pick exact bottoms and you're certainly not going to pick exact tops in that strategy, but nobody is doing that. No trader can perfectly do that and it's not worth doing. What you're trying to do here is just scalp some nice gains and that's what I did today. Now, I could have done it a little bit more effectively with Bank of America. I certainly will take the lessons that I learned today and maybe not be quite as tight on this when the trend, everything was looking perfectly. I might have been a little bit distracted. I don't want to blame it on my kids but I was probably a little bit distracted with them. And so if I had my full attention to this, I might have played this a little bit better. But I saw this stock riding all the way up today. Now, again, I set stop losses. The stock pulled back and hit those. I made a couple dollars. I could have made a lot more. But just goes to show you, I saw Bank of America the day before. I saw Bank of America pulling into a zone that I really liked and I executed on a trade. Now there's also sites like Stockfetcher, which can do a little bit of the work for you. So there we go. That's a swing trading portfolio update. There's certainly going to be more here in the next few weeks and months to come because we're rolling into earnings season, I will have a ton of opportunities to probably do some trades on all these types of earnings moves. So we'll see what happens. And then obviously you've got the election and some other stuff coming up here could have some really exciting moves in the market. So I'll be hopefully here to bring it 
forward to you. So there we go. There was my, there's all my transactions. There's my winning trades. There's my losing trades. We're up about 7% in this portfolio in just about two months time. So hopefully that continues because that would be spectacular gains if you start annualizing that out. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.